The first ray of the foot consists of the first cuneiform and the first metatarsal. It has its own independent range of motion. It is a functional joint. The axis of the first ray runs lateral, anterior, and distal. We say that this axis runs lad. It is a non-supinatory, non-pronatory axis in the foot. In fact, it's the only non-supinatory, non-pronatory axis in the foot. If I were to appreciate the orientation of the axis, it's deviated from both the sagittal and the frontal planes by about 45 degrees. On the transverse plane, it is deviated from the transverse plane about nine degrees. So if I visualize this axis, visualizing it uh, beginning through the navicular tuberosity, running lateral, anterior, and distal, and exiting through the third cuneiform, you can appreciate what this axis is. Because it is deviated essentially equally between the frontal and sagittal plane, it is the only axis in the foot that is literally considered to be a biplanar axis. So when this axis dorsiflexes, it inverts, usually in an equal one-to-one -one relationship. And when this axis plantar flexes, it everts, again, normally in a one-to-one -one axis. This is not an axis that we usually measure so much in degrees, but rather we evaluate the first ray in terms of excursion. So if I were to bring this idea over to an actual foot, what I would like to demonstrate, number one, is where this axis would be running. It's running from about the third cuneiform, exiting out through the navicular tuberosity. It's not an axis that I can grab and put through a range of motion as we demonstrated with the long axis or the oblique axis of the mid-tarsal joints. This is measured by excursion of the first ray. And there are very specific parameters that we use to evaluate the range of motion of this joint. So what I'm going to do is to evaluate for you the first ray in this patient's foot. We're going to put the foot in subtalar joint neutral position. We're going to put the mid-tarsal joint in its neutral position. The neutral position of the mid-tarsal joint is both oblique and longitudinal axes maximally pronated. Then I'm going to support the plane of lesser metatarsals two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to grasp the head of the first metatarsal and I'm going to dorsiflex it and I'm going to plantar flex it. So clinically, when we evaluate the first ray, we are evaluating first ray on the basis of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion excursion. The average foot has five millimeters of dorsiflexion and five millimeters of plantar flexion, and that is evaluated in relationship to the second metatarsal. So the start point is to bring the first metatarsal to the level of the second, then dorsiflex, roughly five millimeters in the average patient, bring it back to a starting point, plantar flex, roughly five degrees, or five millimeters of plantar flexion. And that's the first ray.